Turkey Plains and RC here operating at 27 megahertz and got my trusty diet do. Yes, I say 27 megahertz because that's probably much slower than 2.4 gigahertz and this build's going of course pretty slow so <laughs> Anyways, let's get started back on the FT Edge once again. Uh, let me give you guys an update here as far as where we're at. Um, as you can see, the internal structure piece from last time, uh, you can kind of see it in there. And we've actually got some fuselage, um, some of the outer skin, some of the exterior actually kind of uh, on there. So you can kind of see it's starting to take shape a little bit. Um, now, like I said, you know, this is, of course, being a very slow build. I'm taking my sweet, sweet time with it. So, um, I'm just kind of seeing what happens. So, um, a couple things here in regards to the build process itself. Uh, something I did not mention in the first video um, is that I'm mixing things up a little bit with this particular build in that my primary, my primary glue of choice it's not hot glue, but stuff called tight bond. Now I've heard this um, mentioned a lot in the uh, the Facebook flight test groups. Uh, a lot of people were recommending tight bond over hot glue um, to do their builds. I've seen it on the flight test forums as well. So um, it seems like people are, are, are have sort of sort of migrated over to using uh, tight bond instead of hot glue. And part of the reason for reasoning for that is they they say that tight bond is lighter. Um, so you can actually save on weight by using it. Um, also, you don't run into the issue of taking your plane out on a very, very hot day and having the glue basically liquefy and your plane falling apart. You know, tight bond, of course, will not do that. It'll still be, you know, solid even in, you know, 90 degree temperatures and stuff. So uh, that's another, kind of another reason why people have been uh, switching over to tight bond. Now, one of the drawbacks, of course, with tight bond is it's not as quick. Um, you know, hot glue, normally you just, uh, you know, glue your, you know, glue your piece down, give it 30 seconds to a minute, and it's dry again, and, and, and it's secured. With tight bond, um, once it's in place, it's recommended you do not touch the piece uh, for 30 minutes or possibly even up to a full day, uh, depending on the amount of stress on the piece itself. But that's another reason why this build has, of course, been taking a, a much slower approach. Now, what I've been doing um, for for the build process itself is um, I've been doing uh, tight bond for most of the glue joints and glue areas, and I've been leaving little little spaces in between the different uh, uh, beads of tight bond and applying hot glue in those places. So basically, what's what's happening is the tight or the uh, the hot glue is more or less creating or be, becoming the the clamp that holds the piece in place while the tight bond uh, dries and cures. So that's kind of how the whole process is working. So there is still some hot glue involved with this, um, but for the you know, good chunk of it so far, it has been the uh, tight bond uh, wood glue. So, uh, so far using it, it's been fine. It, it's almost like using Elmer's glue, sort of, except it doesn't dry as quick. Um, so it's been a pretty, pretty good process so far. And this bottle here, this is an eight ounce bottle and this ran me about four to $5 from the uh, hardware store. So, and I've used, um, used about that much of it so far, I think it looks like. So yeah, that's one big thing I've been doing is using tight bond over the hot glue. Um, some other things worth mentioning here too. I did go ahead and order electronics. I have a, an 1120, DYS brushless motor. This is the 2836 slash 8. What's that? 1120 KV motor. Uh, I am using a a 40 amp ESC. This is a Hobby King ESC. Uh, also a separate BEC. And I'm just going to show one here. I've got four 9 gram Metal Gear servos uh, to put in this plane. Fear to go ahead and try to do some kind of heavy duty equipment in this um, so that way it can handle everything from just the basic sport, you know, uh, sport flying to um, to possible, you know, 3D and that kind of stuff. 
if I do eventually start stepping into that. I'm not really much of a 3D flyer, but uh, yeah, I could eventually, of course, progressively get into that. So just kind of wanted to give me a good a good setup to, to, to even lead me into 3D flying if I chose to do that. Okay, as far as some things on the build, most of the... Um, most of all this here was not very, uh, not really very hard to, as far as putting it together. Um, I think this part is real, it has gotten a little bit easier um, since doing the internal structure piece. Um, a couple things worth mentioning though is um, right now, or at least early on in the build, I was not 100% sure how I wanted to do the landing gear on the airplane. And I kind of thought what I would probably do is something similar to the FT Simple Cub. Uh, the FT Simple Cub has like a little foam insert that goes in the bottom of the fuselage that can be removed. Um, and on that little foam insert, you of course have your wire landing gear and then of course your wheels and such. So um, I believe with the FT Edge, that was kind of a similar thought for doing landing gear. And I think that's just what I'm going to stick with for now. Um, is just do the little foam insert with the landing gear attached to it. Um, now, during the, the process of building this and putting, and putting this together, um, I, I ran into a little issue, and the issue was is that the, the foam insert, there's a, there's a, a, a section here where um, two formers kind of uh, come together and have a little gap. That little gap is where the insert, the foam insert, goes into the plane uh, for the landing gear. What had happened is... You know, that was kind of my plan was to go with the foam insert landing gear. And what had happened is I had already glued this section of the bottom piece on before even figuring out where that uh, those formers were. So um, what I had to do is I had to shine a light basically through this area right here to find out where those formers were. And once I saw, once I shined the light through it, of course, luckily with foam board, light goes through it very easily. And once I saw, you know, once I saw through the light there where those formers were located, of course, they were the darker shadow areas, that told me where I could go ahead and safely cut. So what I did was once I found out where those formers were, I took a barbecue skewer and just poked, you know, poked some holes right there so I would know where to cut, where to put my landing gear on. Now, I think everybody has their own different, or, or, or kind of doing their own techniques or their own ways of the landing gear. I've heard some other people doing maybe some possible plywood and then things like that. So, um, you know, this may not apply to you, but if you want to do the, the foam insert landing gear, where you basically have landing gear that just kind of snaps in place, um, you probably ought to go ahead and try to more, at least not do what I do, and go ahead and try to mark your holes early on before you glue this piece on. So, but that is a, that is a workaround if you happen to do that on accident. Is just take a light, shine it through. Um, I believe it's these tabs right here. If you shine, if you can get a little bit of a, a light shining through that, you'll be able to see the light coming through and then see where your formers are located and then make your cuts. So that's how that happened. <laughs> Uh, something else I want to mention on the FT Edge build, as you can see, I've got you know a, a good portion um, of the the lower part of the fuselage as well as the top turtle deck here. Um, I haven't got the tail section on yet, um, and I'm probably going to hold off on the tail section. And the reason why is I want to make sure everything is nice, good, square, and true, and and all that good stuff. So I don't want to secure my tail section on until I've made sure that everything else looks good. So probably once I get the wing in place, that's when I'll start looking at the tail section, getting it set up and make sure it looks good before I permanently glue it down. So I am kind of holding off on the tail section of that for now until I get uh, some more things built. Actually somebody on the, uh, on the Facebook group, uh, Flight Test Fans, that had brought that little tidbit up and I think that's a very good idea you know, don't permanently set everything in place just yet. Check check it all first before you actually glue it down. Uh, something else that has been brought up through my research on the FT Edge build is probably, in my opinion, one of the weaker areas. And I, I haven't even really tested this to make sure it is a weak area. I can tell just by kind of looking at it and by what I've read that it is indeed a weak area. And that is the nose. So, um... Right now, this is what we have for the nose itself. There is a, uh, a cowl 
part that goes around this, and of course the motor pod will fit in there. Uh, but there is a, like I said, a cow that fits around this. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all that protects that nose. So basically this part right here, the motor pod, and then that cow, that's all the protection you get. So if this thing were to have an incident where I do a complete, you know, nose down, that's going to do some significant damage here to the nose. So I do plan on doing some reinforcements to this. Probably doing some wood pieces in there, barbecue skewers, popsicle sticks, just whatever I could find to help brace this and make this area stiffer. Um, so it doesn't uh, get too much damage in a, in a crash if I do happen to have a, a big nose down incident or something like that. So that, in my opinion, is kind of a weak area. And like I said, I haven't even done anything else to it. But I, just seeing that right there kind of sets off a red flag to me that says this area needs some uh, needs some support. So we'll be kind of adding some uh, support in there to help beef that area up. Uh, as far as everything else, um, like I said, everything else is going pretty good. Um, like I said, it's just been a slow process, not just because I'm taking my time with it, but also because the Type 1 glue, of course, is uh, takes longer to, to get set up. So, so anyways, um, that is all that I have right now on the FT Edge build process. I'll continue providing more updates as I uh, go through the process, building it, and, and, and I want to share my experiences with you guys as well. If you have any questions at all on anything so far, Please feel free to leave me a comment and let me know. All right, and that's all for me, guys. I want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.